all of us have our weaknesses. Every person has some area or some areas of life that we just struggle with that we tend to fall into doing things that are wrong, doing sin. Now, one of the interesting things about our human nature is that a lot of times we flirt with that weakness. We do things that technically are not actually doing that weakness, not actually giving into it, but we skirt right around it just enough that we can say it's not giving into the weakness, but we still get some of the benefits, some of the excitement of whatever that weakness is. And that's what I call strengthening the weakness that you know we we know a weak area in our life but we still like to play with it a little bit just kind of skirt right up to the edge of it don't actually do it but just kind of play with it a little bit well james actually talks about that kind of struggle that we have within ourselves in james chapter 1 verses 14 and 15 listen to what james says about those things that come from inside of us but each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desire. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. You know, we hear a lot about Satan as our enemy, and he certainly is a big enemy of God and a big enemy of us living for God. But I'm convinced that our greatest enemy is usually ourself, that we we bring problems on ourselves because Satan can't force us to do anything. All he can do is tempt us. And a lot of times the temptation comes because we have been letting something build on the inside of us. And that's what James is talking about. James talks about a progression where something starts small, just a little weakness, but we let it grow and become something more. I mean, he said in verse 14, but each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desire. So it begins inside of us that we let whatever that weakness is take root and grow. And without meaning to, we feed it, we make it stronger so that the weakness turns into something much bigger than it should have ever been because we're playing with it just a little bit. We're not getting rid of it. Not, we're not running away from it. We're not finding a constructive, godly way to deal with it, but we're actually starting to embrace it more and more until, as James says, then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. So the idea is that we, we flirt with that weakness and we play with it. We, we feed it and it becomes stronger and stronger until we finally give in and actually do it. We've been skirting all around it, but then we finally give in and we sin. And the thing is, we cannot ever forget the truth. Sin is always destructive. It never leads to anything good. There, there may be some excitement and something good in the short term, but in the long term, sin always has consequences that are bad and ultimately absolutely deathly. And that's what James reminds us of. So what can we do to starve the weakness, to, to not give into it, to not flirt with it, but to overcome it and to become strong to the point we don't give into that temptation, that weakness? Well, James gives us the answer in the next few verses. In verses 16 through 18, notice what he says. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. By his own choice, he gave us birth by the word of truth so that we would be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So I would say from what James is telling us that the key is to stop being inwards, to stop looking inside of ourselves for the answer, but to start looking back up to God. Because when you think about it, we are never in our own strength going to find the ability to really truly overcome those weaknesses. And that's what the world tells us, that you just need to find your own inner strength, your own self. Well, that's where the problem began, right? James said that we fall into these things because we let that sin from our own evil desires inside grow. So if it comes from inside, the answer is not going to be inside of us. 
but the answer is going to be to God. And, and James says he is the father of lights that gives you all good things. So when we think about that, it means God is going to give us everything we need to overcome that weakness. And ultimately, the greatest thing he's going to do to help us overcome that weakness is that he changes our very character. See, when we give Jesus our lives, when we ask him to forgive us of our sin and come in and take control of our life, he sends his Holy Spirit, and his Holy Spirit doesn't just do a facial, just a little bit of cosmetic change so that we look better. He changes our very heart attitudes. He works from the inside out to recreate us and make us into something brand new. So that's what we need to do, that we need to stop looking to self. That's where the problems begin. Stop feeding the weakness and making it strong, but instead starve it by not looking inward, but looking upward, looking to God and letting God strengthen us and guide us. So here are some practical ideas to put into your life this week to help you stop feeding the weakness and making it stronger. And to do that, it is very simple. Stop looking inward so much by focusing on your relationship with God. Make spending time with Him an absolute priority every day. Spend time reading your Bible and praying with God every day. Then choose one weakness that you struggle with and ask God to help you out of the relationship, deal with that struggle, and defeat it so that you are no longer feeding the weakness but starving it. And then ask God to teach you to stop flirting with that temptation, to stop playing around with it, getting close to it, but not actually doing it, and just completely stay away so that you can starve it out of your life. Thank you for being with me today.